So we all remember the infamous cutscene where the Arbiter is sent flying to the bottom of the Index Chamber. Well, in the early days of Halo tricking, one of the big ideas that we had was to get a vehicle into that area, which at the time seemed completely impossible and absurd, but we still thought about it. And we tried to get things, we tried to take things as far as we could. And early on, Carl and Prince of the Sword made the biggest progress in all of this. Uh, Carl was the first person to get inside the index chamber. And Prince of the Sword was the first person to get to the bottom of it, which was, it's still insane to think about to this day that he was able to do that. And these guys, they were ahead of their time, and I, I consider myself lucky that they were basically my mentors in tricking. Because they were doing things way ahead of their time, like launching, they were transferring enemies and vehicles across loading zones and then launching across the canyon, which is just insane. But for the longest time, there wasn't really much progress made, you know, as for getting a vehicle to the end of the map, until a group of trickers got together and figured out this method of launching through the loading zone, and one day, Grumpy did it. Grumpy was the first person to get a vehicle to the end of quarantine zone, but, you know, people still thought, you know, what if, what if you could get it into the index chamber? And uh, after that, Duelist managed to launch a tank to the end of quarantine zone, so, these were like the biggest steps in the right direction that had happened for years. But after that, there wasn't really much progress. And a lot of this is because even if you get a vehicle to the end of the map, there's an invisible barrier blocking you from launching the vehicle over into the cutscene area. So, you know, for the legacy video, I really wanted to add to the legacy of this lineage of tricks. And I wanted to actually get a vehicle inside the cutscene area. Not just inside, but I wanted to get it to the bottom as well. So, my first idea was to freeze a phantom and then use the scarab gun to guide it up basically through this, you know, huge vertical area. Because that's the most difficult area to get through, whether you're, you know, trying to launch the old school way or, or any other method. That's one of the areas that, you know, you struggle with the most. But, even though this method technically worked, it was very, very time consuming and annoying to do. So, even though I, would, I was able to get a vehicle to the end of the map, in single player, the problem was is that even once I got it to the end of the map, I had nowhere to go from there. I couldn't get the vehicle any further from that. So I was thinking maybe I just have to rely on luck here. And the idea was, you know, maybe if I could get one of the glass boxes to stay on the gondola or to get, you know, land on the gondola or one of the elite allies to survive on the gondola, I could use those to get the Warthog through. Because the Warthog would, the Warthog and the Ghost are probably the only ones that could fit through, right? So I went back to the old school method, even though it was a lot more difficult, it's less time consuming than using, you know, freezing a phantom and slowly pushing it all the way up. So one day I finally got, you know, during one of my attempts, I finally got to this point in the you know the map which is one of the hardest launches to do it's a very very difficult pixel launch to make even if it seems like you've aimed at the exact spot that you did the last time it, it can sometimes you can fly off in a totally different direction so very difficult launch to make but this time I finally got lucky and an elite survived so I was finally able to put my th theory to the test and see if I could get a warthog inside the index chamber. And it worked. 
for the first time ever a warthog was put inside the index chamber. Now I just had to blast myself through the cutscene area without triggering the cutscene, which is, you know, very risky. Which is one of the reasons why this trick is so hard. Because even if you do everything right, you might still trigger the cutscene and ruin everything. And I was able to attempt to get to the bottom, but I accidentally hit the E button on my computer and got it out of the warthog and it exploded. Even though I hit the walls just right to reset the fall timer, I messed it up and felt like an idiot. But not long after that, when I thought I'd given up, I thought I'd given up on this, but not long after that, the Acrophobia Skull became uh, an official skull of Halo 2 MCC. And I came up with a new method, a way easier method for getting a vehicle to the end of Quarantine Zone. All you gotta do is get a Warthog and half jaw and use his body to make a grenade pile before you trigger the cutscene. You set up the launch beforehand and you trigger it with your Warthog. And then you have to go back to it. What you have to do is blast yourself back as far as you possibly can and fly there with acrophobia while throwing grenades down so that you can rebuild your shield. And then all you have to do is throw your plasma grenade and hit the launch right. But actually landing on the gondola turned out to be very, very difficult. So I opted out for trying to land on the gate instead. And the idea was pretty straightforward. All you have to do is land on the gate, or at least close to it, and then launch yourself, you know, kind of trail the gondola as fast as you can without hitting the death barrier that follows the gondola you near know, the bottom of it. And you'll get two checkpoints that you can use, so you have to use them very wisely. And you get one right about here, and from here you have to launch the Warthog through the other gate and onto the platform. And you have to do this as fast as you can and rebuild your shield as quickly as you can, otherwise it, it, it just doesn't work. You're too far behind to catch up with the gondola. But if you do it right and you time it right, you can rebuild your shield just in time to get a perfect checkpoint while you're ready to launch. And after attempting this for a while, I was finally able to do it. And this method is so much easier than all the other methods. And from here, all you have to do is wait for a checkpoint. And then, you know, with Sputnik and Feather on, you can launch yourself really high up there. And all you got to do is launch yourself, you know, up and over the gondola. And from there, you can literally just drive off, you know, the gate opening and land on the gondola, right? And because of the way the gondola moves, it's actually pretty easy to do. You don't have to worry about, like, falling off that much because the gondola's physics, like, kind of locks the objects down onto it. So, once you reach this point, all you're really uh, hoping for is that one of the items, one of the objects, you know, either an allied elite or one of those glass boxes manage to, by chance, fall onto the gondola, which is the one thing that you have to depend on is, is a little luck. But this time, you know, this time I got both of them. I got uh, one of the glass boxes and an elite that survived on the gondola. So I was able to test out my other theory, which was using the, the glass box. And uh, the Flood had a couple SMGs laying around on the gondola, which is pretty common. So use those to push the Warthog through, launch through the area, and from here, with Acrophobia, all I had to do was drive off the cliff and make it to the bottom.